I'd like to call to order the regular meeting on January 14, 2019, the 617. Please join council member Stipp in the Pledge of Allegiance followed by the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Almighty God, we give you thanks for bringing us to the start of another year. You have kept us in the days that have passed. We pray that you keep us in the days to come. Teach us to be faithful in all things, grateful for all your gifts, urgent in your work, and hopeful for the future of our city. Lord, we can easily get caught up in the things that don't really matter. We pray that you fill us with your love, speak your words of comfort to those that are hurting, and have hope have hope to encourage us and demonstrate grace and joy that comes with knowing you. Gracious God, we claim nothing of our own and all things come from you. Accept this prayer and the service of our lives for the betterment of this great city in this new year. Grant that we may use all things for your glory and the blessings and for the blessing of those in our care. Please be with the men and women serving our city, county, state, nation, no matter where they are, Keep watch over them as you keep watch over us. Amen. 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 Thank you for that special prayer, Councilman Stiff. All right, we're going to go to the communication. This is always the wonderful, good feeling time. Then we can bring people up and talk about them and ward them. Uh, so I'm going to do this, Council, just kind of brief you on this. I'm going to take uh, for, uh, one at a time. And then after the first one, we will go over here and a picture will be taken. Okay, so we'll do that. Then I'll, then I'll introduce the next one, okay? All right, so 4.1. I really have the pleasure to recognize Sally Kinko as Citizen of the Year and Mike Severino from the Cincinnati Reds as the Corporate Citizen of the Year. Um, so I will start uh, with Sally, but... Um, it, I just want to kind of give background because you know we're streaming tonight. We've we've grown up all of a sudden in our and so I want the public to know why we do this. Uh, it is a time we as a city council recognize a citizen and a corporate citizen in Goodyear for their engagement in our community. Each year we list the recommendations from our city council and we review this. And sometimes I have a difficult task of selecting the individual from this list and from the business list from our community, which has dedicated time, support, and represents the city of Goodyear in a positive manner. Today, I have selected a true historian of our community and an exceptional community partner to be recognized for their contribution. I would like Sally Kinko, longtime member of the Three Rivers Historical Society and co-author of the Arcadia book on Goodyear to join me at uh, the front to be recognized. You have everybody from your community come on right over here so you can be I seen. <laughs> you do, and that's why you're so successful. All right, so Citizen of the Year, Ms. Sally Kinko. Whereas Sally Kinko has been a model citizen and dedicated volunteer for organizations in the city of Goodyear for several years. I've known her since I've been on the council, maybe before. Whereas Sally is considered a key historian for the city of, and the Southwest Valley region and where she has been instrumental in archiving the information for future generations, including her own memories of moving to Goodyear by train with her family in 1945. Whereas Sally's selfishness dedicated over the year of her time to researching the content for the published archaic book on Goodyear, and your co-author, who we all met, was your friend, Dr. Denise Vase. Whereas her continued connections to fellow prisoner, uh, pioneers, not prisoners, pioneers, <laughs> they could have been prisoners, we, we had jails back then, to fellow pioneers assured the book would be a, 
comprised of memories and photos to capture the charming essence of what was once the town of Goodyear to the present day. Sally has wholeheartedly committed her retired years to the Three Rivers Historical Society, whereas she was once the president, the secretary, and I remember all those hours that you worked. For many, many years, Sally continues to remain devoted advocate for the society. And Sally graciously volunteers her spare time locally and often serves as a docent to the Goodyear Arts and Culture Commission's Mobile Museum, where she candidly speaks to the photos shared at the various events. Sally, you have given years of her life in service to this city and has proven herself to be an invaluable asset to our community. And Sally is a proud advocate for our fine city. From the mayor, thank you. It doesn't say that in here, but I want to tell you that. Sharing the history and the love of Goodyear throughout the valley. And now I can proudly say, now therefore it be resolved that I, Georgia Lohr, mayor of the city of Goodyear, Arizona, do hereby proclaim Sally Kiko as the 2018 Citizen of the Year for her leadership, her volunteerism and dedication to the Goodyear community. In witness whereof I've set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Goodyear, Arizona to be affixed to this 14th day of January, 2000. Congratulations. Let's give a round of applause. Now, this is the moment that I'm going to give her the microphone. She might have a few words for us. Sally? Thank you. I am both honored and humbled because I know there are a lot of volunteers that work hard for the city of Goodyear as well. But I was blessed to grow up in Goodyear when the population was about 1,000. Mm. And I am particularly happy to see it grow to a population of 84,000 both beautifully and gracefully. It's grown well. Thank you. We're going to go over here. Be careful Council, run over here. Yes. We're going to take a picture. Yeah. We will. Now I'd like to bring uh, Mike Severino, Director of Arizona's Operation, to, to the podium. Now he's here on behalf of the Cincinnati Reds to recognize as the 2018 Corporate Citizen of the Year. Before I start this, you were everywhere. When you came, every event we went, you were somewhere. If it was in the corner or in the center, I mean, I kept saying, who is this person? And uh, I got to know you very quickly, uh, very capable, and a great representative. So I am pleased to be able to read this to you and to present, present this to you. Just one moment. I can't hold on. It's just... All right. 
Corporate Citizen of the Year 2018, Cincinnati Reds Goodyear, Arizona. Whereas the Cincinnati Reds have been exceptional community partners since the arrival in Goodyear in 2009. That was the big deal back then, it was, it still is. And the Cincinnati Reds have made significant investments in the progress and development of the city of Goodyear and broader Southwest Valley. Whereas the city of Goodyear has enjoyed an outstanding relationship with the Castellini family, team management, and other staff in our shared effort to ensure the, that Goodyear is the premier destination for spring training fans in Arizona. Whereas the consistent generosity of the Cincinnati Reds with the city and the Southwest Valley Chamber of Commerce and the many deserving causes throughout the West Valley have inspired a meaningful change within our community. Whereas the contributions of the Cincinnati Reds throughout the community, especially the youth and the family initiatives, since their arrival in this region, we have, we have inspired a new generation of loyal baseball fans who will have been forever touched by the team's generosity. The Cincinnati Reds will be celebrating, get this, 150th year anniversary of baseball's first professional team in 2019. The city of Goodyear looks forward to our continued relationship with the Cincinnati Reds and thanks the team for their stewardship, their commitment in our community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, George Lohr, Mayor of the City of Goodyear, do hereby proclaim Cincinnati Reds as the 2018 Corporate Citizen of the Year for their leadership, service, and dedication to the community. In witness thereof, I have set my hand and caused the seal of the Goodyear, Arizona, to be affixed on the 14th day of January 2019. And you are a great part of this. I want you to know this. So congratulations. Quite as uh, able as Sally with the uh, speech, so I have a few prepared comments. Mayor Lord, Vice Mayor Campbell, and esteemed council members, thank you for this evening, the chance to, uh, opportunity to present here. On behalf of the Robert Castellini family and the entire Cincinnati Reds organization, thank you for this prestigious award. We really appreciate it. It seems like yesterday that we arrived in Goodyear to the warmest of welcomes. Now, with nine spring training seasons under our belt, we prepare for season number 10 at beautiful Goodyear Ballpark. And the journey has only grown sweeter along the way. As an organization, we have been fortunate to work with such a tremendous partner as the city of Goodyear, as well as the local businesses and charities, civic and community groups, and of course, the best baseball fans in the Valley. So it is with great pride and humility that the Reds organization accepts this award and looks forward to continuing to serve the Goodyear community for many more years to come. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good job. Now we're going to take the picture. Okay, we walk up here.
thing. Just a minute, guys. Yes. All right, we're on line number five. This is the time for citizens who would like to address the city council on any non-agenda item. Are there any speaker cards? Actually, Mayor, we have um, Mr. Kessman from the ballpark to do a presentation oh. under communications. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, was this on the schedule? Did I miss the sheet? Right here. Right Thank here. you. Well, it wouldn't be with me if I didn't make a mistake, right? It's okay. here, yeah, here we go. No, it's fine. So that's the presentation that I didn't finish. So we're on 4.2. Ballpark staff will present an overview of the Arizona Classic, which will be held at the Goodyear Ballpark from January 25th through January 27th. Ballpark General Manager Bruce Kessman and guest. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members. We're just under two weeks away from another exciting event uh, taking place at the Goodyear Ballpark. We have the Arizona Balloon Classic beginning uh, Friday evening from 4 to 8 p.m. on January 25th. The event will continue on Saturday. It's an all-day Saturday event starting at 7 a.m. and it will conclude at 8 p.m. And then the entire event will conclude on Sunday morning between 7 a.m. and uh, 10 a.m. And I have the event organizer, Tim Matikavich with the Arizona Balloon Classic, who's gonna tell us about all the exciting things that will be taking place over those three days. Yeah. Thank you, Bruce, uh, Mayor, Council. Uh, we are honored again to um, be able to produce the eighth annual Arizona Balloon Classic in the city of Goodyear. Thank you very much for inviting us back. We have some exciting um, updates. We have over 37 hot air balloon teams coming from all over the country. Uh, most of them are from out of state, and I think they're just interested in buying a second home. So maybe <laughs> it's going to be here in Goodyear. We have, um, we have uh, stages now. We have a few stages that will have entertainment on both stages, the main stage and our food fest stage. We're expanding our food fest, um, which is a culinary experience that we're, we've turned into a, um, an exhibition, uh, so to speak, where uh, we'll have uh, demonstrations and we'll have another stage. And of course, um, you'll be able to sample food from 22 of the best uh, food vendors uh, that, the, that we can provide. Uh, we're, we're extremely excited about that. We have over 160 uh, volunteers. We're still looking for some more volunteers. We need almost uh, 200, 225 volunteers to make sure that this is a successful event. Um, we have, uh, we calculated over 300,000 square feet of hot air balloons, so you don't want to miss it. Of course, we're bringing the fireworks back on, on Saturday evening. So we'll have balloons, we'll have music, uh, we'll have food. Um, we're excited about some of our special sponsors like QT um, and some of those uh, Goodyear-based companies that will come and support this event. Uh, Mayor, Council, um, thank you very much for allowing us to come back. And as I mentioned earlier, we just want to make sure we don't want to screw this up. But uh, you can get information at abcfest.com. That's where you can get all your information abcfest.com. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Um, thank you, Bruce, for allowing us to come back. Well, thank you. Just wait, because Council may have something to say. Council, yes, the Councilman Manson. <laughs> yeah, this is a great event. I know my kids and I both really loved loved this event. It was fun. I mean, there was a lot of good things going on. They liked the, they had the stage with the bike, bike riders out there last year, too. That was really fun. And uh, yeah, a lot of good memories and just a good, another good thing for people to experience in Goodyear that we can offer them for um, entertainment and, and things to, to do in the city. And we got a lot of heads turning also when they all start lit up, at least along Australia, all the people that were coming and going. So uh, definitely a lot of attention. And it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you guys are back and I want to continue it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Lower Tano. I, I want to echo that. And it's a great event. And I hope everyone comes out. Um, I do have a question. How much has it grown in since last year? I'm sorry, the question? Has it grown since last year, more balloons since? Uh, yes, ma'am, um, that's a great question. So um, I've, I've been keeping Bruce and the staff up to date, so we're double the amount of hot air balloons. Oh. So um, we had 18 uh, active <coughs> balloon teams last year. We have 37 this year. So we're going to be going into what we refer to as a wave. 
So in the morning, you'll have one balloon leave and then 12 balloons leave, and then the next wave will be another 12 balloons. So this will actually be a, a, a pretty incredible sight in the sky above Goodyear. Wow. Well, I'm excited and hopefully we'll double again next year. Yeah, thank, <laughs> thank you. you. Thank you so much for coming back, wanting to come back to Goodyear. We love having you and we look forward to the exciting three days. This is a wonderful family friendly event and we encourage all of our Goodyear residents to come and take part of it. Thank you. Councilor Sip. I'm very appreciative that you're, that you're back. Um, I have to have a conversation with the Army about how they schedule me. I will be gone again, um, oh. which is very disappointing for me because I love these kinds of events. Um, but just thank you so much for, uh, for being here. And, uh, and I, despite my absence, I'm really excited about you being here and, you. and appreciate everything that we can do for you. Yes, and thank you so much. And I apologize for my error there, but um, it brought your attention to you, so uh, that, that will help. Anyway, I, we do. We really appreciate what you do. It is so exciting to look in the sky and see all those, and I never thought that our city of Goodyear would have it. Uh, we've gone and traveled on the other side, uh, you know, and they've had it, and so we feel very important, uh, and I think the, the citizens really love really love this event. So thank you very much. Thank you. And Bruce, thank you. All right. Now I'm back on track. Here we go. Now is the time for citizens who would like to address the city council on any non-agenda item. Are there any speaker cards? Yes, Mayor. All right. Would Clark, you like to announce? Clark Landrum. All right. So I have to talk about this before you start speaking. The council will listen to comments and may take any one of the following, respond to criticism, request the staff investigation and report on the matter, request that the matter be scheduled in the near future. Uh, you have three minutes. The yellow light and buzzer will let you know you have 30 seconds left to speak. And before you speak, please identify yourself, clearly stating for record your name and address. Oh, uh, my name is Clark Landrum, uh, 18605 West McDowell Road here in Goodyear. Um, thanks, uh, Mayor, Ma uh, Vice Mayor, and Council for having me up here. The, the reason for my uh, can you get that up there? Let's see. Oh, there, there we go. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, the reason for uh, for coming uh, up front here is to to welcome and the public and council to the grand opening of our CNG fueling station, uh, which will be February twentieth, uh, and that it will be out. Uh, uh, in the uh, in good year here. So uh, it is a nine million dollar investment that we've made uh, to help support you know the city of Goodyear and the West Valley in regards to compressed natural gas. You may have seen our new trucks. We have 16 new CNG trucks uh, running through the Southwest Valley at this time. Uh, those trucks um, save diesel uh, gas emissions and they run significantly quieter as well. So uh, you know no point being once again to uh, to um, you know, support and welcome anyone who wants to come out uh, to the grand opening celebration on February 20th. Thank you very much for the presentation. What's the time, sir? The time is 10:30 uh, a.m. Thank you. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. Do we have any other cards? No, Mayor. All right. Well, let's get on with the consent agenda. The next item is the consent agenda is to approval of the consent uh, agenda. Will the city clerk please read consent agendas items 6.1 through 6.5 by title only, please? 6.1, approval of minutes. 6.2, accept the 2018 Homeland Security Grant Program Award to the Goodyear Fire Department. 6.3, 1, adopt ordinance number 2019-1420, approving the transfer from Maricopa County to the City of Goodyear right-of-way generally located within the Broadway Road alignment between South Bullard Avenue and South Litchfield Road, approving the annexation of such right-of-way and extending and increasing the corporate limits of the City of Goodyear, Maricopa County, State of Arizona, upon the approval of the transfer by the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors in compliance with the requirements of ARS Section 9-471N providing authority and direction to the city clerk, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. 6.32, authorize the city engineer to move forward with improvements that may be initiated prior to completion of the annexation. 6.4, number one, adopt ordinance number 2019-1421, approving the transfer from Maricopa County to the city of Goodyear. Right of way, generally located within the Thomas Road alignment between North Citrus Road and North Cotton Lane, 
approving the annexation of such right of way and extending and increasing the corporate limits of the city of Goodyear, Maricopa County, state of Arizona, upon the approval of the transfer by the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors in compliance with the requirements of ARS section 9-471N, providing authority and direction to the city clerk, providing for severability and providing for an effective date. 6.42, authorize the city engineer to move forward with improvements that may be initiated prior to completion of the annexation. 6.5, approve the replat of province at Estrella Mountain Ranch, parcel two, Cantania. Thank you very much. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. All right. Does anybody on the council wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? Then may I please have a motion and a second to approve items 6.1 through 6.5 on the consent agenda. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Councilman Hampton and a second by Vice Mayor Campbell. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Councilmember Pizzillo? Aye. Councilmember Loretano? Aye. Councilmember Stipp? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Councilmember Kano? Aye. Ca Mayor Lord? Aye. Motion carries. All right, we're moving to business. And the first one on the agenda is I would like, first of all, Council, I'd like 7.4, I'd like Council to remind Council to wait until there's a motion on the table for any questions or discussion. So the proposal on 7.4 is to abandon the portions of street and public utility easement in the select subdivision. Real estate coordinator, Linda Beals, will be presented. So it doesn't look like Linda Beals. So Sarah, you have the floor. Mayor, council members, um, I was here for another matter, so I told Linda I would cover for her today. Can you move that microphone a little closer? Thank you. I still haven't gotten any taller since last time I was here. <laughs> so I'm presenting for Linda the uh, conditional abandonment of portions of the streets and public utility easements within airport subdivisions number two and airport subdivision number four. This is in connection with a redevelopment of a parcel of two parcels of land um, that were platted in the early 80s and never developed. The current owner of the property would like to consolidate the lots into, uh, well, the lower half uh, of the property will be one huge lot and then up along MC85, the existing lots will remain as they are. In order to do the consolidation, they need to remove and uh, have the city vacate and abandon certain existing right away that was dedicated and as well as the uh, PUEs. The property was not uh, developed, so the roads that are being abandoned do not exist at this point. We have received all utility clearances. The only catch in this particular abandonment is that council has to make a finding that the roads are no longer necessary. What drives the roads from being no longer necessary in this case is the final plat. But because we're working through infrastructure issues, the final plat's not ready to be uh, presented to council for approval. So we have a conditional abandonment and upon the satisfaction of a condition, which is the approval of a plat, and it was included as an exhibit, um, so on the approval of a plat substantially in conformance with the exhibit that was presented in your materials, then uh, and with uh, direction to record it, we would record the abandonment resolution and then we would record the plat. All the materials are presented. I'm happy to answer any questions or if you'd like to see any of the visuals or share any of the visuals, but it's all in the packet. All right, very good. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right, will the city clerk please do resolution 2019-1931 by title only. Adopt resolution number 2019-1931, conditionally vacating, abandoning certain streets and relinquishing all interest in certain public utility easements previously dedicated to the city in the plat for Airport Commerce Center Subdivision 4 and in Airport Commerce Center Subdivision 2, providing for an effective date of the abandonment and imposing requirements and conditions for the abandonment to become effective and imposing a deadline for completion of the abandonment. Thank you. Can I have a motion and second to adopt resolution 2019-1931? Do I hear a motion? So moved. I heard a motion by Council Member Stiff second. and a second by Vice Mayor Campbell. Open for council discussion. No council discussion. Roll call vote, please. 
Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Council Member Loretano? Aye. Council Member Stipp? Aye. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Council Member Kano? Aye. Council Member Pazillo? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. Great. Thank you, Sarah, for subbing. All right, so we'll go to 7.1. Proposal to update the designated truck routes within the City of Good Goodyear. City Traffic Engineer Luke Albert presenting. Right. Welcome, Luke. Good evening. Good, sorry. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Tonight, I am presenting a, a city ordinance, an ordinance to update the truck route section of the city code. Shown this slide is an agenda for tonight's presentation. Uh, first, I'll discuss uh, truck route definitions within the existing city code that was established in 2002. And then I'll discuss the proposed truck routes as well as recommendations. The, the trucks regulated by this um, ordinance update are semi-trailers, box and platform trucks, hazardous material trucks, and other trucks greater than 18,000 pound weight rating. It's important to note that emergency vehicles, garbage trucks, school buses, transit buses, and recreational vehicles are excluded. A truck route is a street upon which regional truck traffic is directed for through travel or local travel. For example, a truck traveling along the M65 or I-10 through Goodyear from Buckeye to Phoenix would be considered a regional truck on a truck route. And, and local pickup and deliveries must travel from the shortest route from the truck route to the point of delivery or pickup. So a truck that's do, making a delivery in the PB 303 area, for example, must travel along 303 directly to the point of delivery on Indian School Road or Callenback Road. They would not be allowed to travel along Indian School Road through Goodyear to the destination or along Pebble Creek Parkway to that area either. Shown this slide are the truck routes that are currently identified in the existing city code. The roads shown this slide are currently identified as local truck traffic only in the existing city code. But upon the update of the city code with this ordinance, all roads not identified as truck routes will be restricted to local truck traffic only. This map identifies the proposed truck routes in this, within the city. And as mentioned previously, any road not identified on this slide would be restricted to local truck traffic only. And city staff has identified three streets to post as local truck traffic only upon adoption of this ordinance due to the, the greatest potential for violations. And those roads are Cerebral Avenue south of I-10, Pebble Creek Parkway north of I-10, Bullard Avenue north of I-10. But other roads will be posted as needed to help with enforcement if issues arise. City staff recommends adopting ordinance 2018-1412 to amend city code section 13-2-13 to update designated truck routes in Goodyear. And adoption of this ordinance will allow enforcement to occur for instances where truck route requirements are not followed. I'd like to thank Sarah Chilton for all of her effort and assistance um, in putting this ordinance together. And then I'm not sure. With that, I'd like to open up for any questions. Thank you very much. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? Will the city clerk please, please read ordinance 2019 1412 by title only? Adopt ordinance number 2019-1412, amending the Goodyear City Code by amending section 13-2-13 truck routes to update the designated truck routes within the city of Goodyear, providing for corrections, severability, and an effective date. Thank you. And can I have a motion second to adopt ordinance 2019-1412? Do I hear that motion? Second. second. I heard a motion from Councilman Laura Tano. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the second Kano. from Councilman uh, Kano. Open for council discussion. Councilman Hampton. Did you say that the, the routes are going to be posted with a sign? Or are they just going to be, or how, would they, how would people know, I guess, they're supposed to go that route? We, we will um, we'll post signage on the truck routes. In addition, we will also notify the, the, the businesses. Business. We have a, a list of businesses, direct economic development, that 
obviously are very familiar with trucking patterns. That, that it'll, that's going to be the best way for us to make sure we get the word out is to directly contact those businesses. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Lortano. Obviously, as we switch over, it's going to take time for people to realize that. But once it's switched over, is there a part of the ordinance I might miss it? What the fine is or how for enforcement? Uh, Mayor Lord, Councilor Lortano, um, I'm going to see if Sarah can help me out with the, I, I believe it's a, a <coughs> I believe there's a, a, like a 30 day period before the ordinance is in effect. Thanks, Dan. Can someone in staff come forth? So the, the ordinance would take effect in 30 days from its adoption, but um, I would assume that law enforcement will probably be handing out warnings. The other issue I'd like to point out is under state law, we cannot cite anyone for violating or driving on a restricted route unless it's posted. So it will take some time for us to get the yeah. signage up. So there should be a good long lead on time before uh, anybody actually gets cited. Uh, if there are violations in the future, uh, it would be treated as a class one misdemeanor. Okay. So we'll have an education period first to yeah, get everyone yes. up. And there'll be plenty of time because of the need to post signage as to where truck routes are, are limited to local traffic only. You have a question, Vice Mayor? Yes, Vice Mayor. Um, I have a question, uh, Luke, regarding uh, Bullard. We, we are now saying from Bullard South of I-10 to Estrella Parkway, that will be the truck route. It's already designated the north part from Indian School to, um, gosh, I guess McDowell or even further, that is local traffic only. Will that remain the same? <coughs> Mayor Lord, Vice Mayor Campbell, that's correct. That'll be local truck traffic only. We'll certainly keep the existing signs in place and supplement with the additional signs as needed. Okay, and then I did notice you said that you're only going to request 20 signs and you're going to, do the signs have to be made and do we have to order them? And We will, or, um, Mayor Lord, Council, or, sorry, Vice Mayor Campbell, we will order signs um, with the adoption of this ordinance. Okay, so do you think we might have this in place in six months? Uh, we'll certainly have the signage posted much sooner than that, within within a month or two. Okay, but thank you very much. Councilor Fazello. Is there any specific area within the city as you were putting this together that we're having issues with? Mayor Complaints. Lord, Councilor Fazello, certainly Cerebral Avenue has been an issue for many years. That's mm -hmm. That's been the most common issue we've had um, from trucks coming from the, the general area of that Commerce Center down there off of Commerce Drive coming up uh, up Cerebral. And that this will help uh, remedy that issue? Correct. This will certainly help with that. Okay, thank you. Council Member Steph? All right, I, I told staff earlier, I, for the first time in my life, drank smart water on Saturday, and I don't think it had helped at all. So <laughs> if you could... Basically, what you're saying is a truck that originates in Goodyear has to follow this truck route. Is that, did I? That's correct. They must take the shortest route from their point of delivery or pickup to the truck route. Okay, so uh, McLean on McDowell, they will exit their, there's no penalty for them driving on McDowell to Litchfield, Litchfield down to I-10, and then going from there. Correct. However, if they choose, if they need to go north, you're saying they're going to have to take I-10 west to 303 to go north? They, they take this short, like the most, pra the most practical route, um, to the, the shortest or most practical route. So in that case, I would say they'd either take... Um, McDowell to Litchfield at 303, or McDowell to, or sorry, McDowell to Litchfield I-10 at 303, or McDowell to Bullard to I-10 at 303. Either one of those would be practical routes to take. But essentially, the only way for anything leaving McLean's going northbound is to get to the 303 to go up. To get to I-10 to 303 to go up. Correct. Yeah, okay. So, I, I guess, I, have we, have we communicated with McLean's about the proposed truck routes? 
because they're a big distributor that is north of I they don't meet any of these criteria and they've been in this community a very long time mayor, mayor lord councilman staples we have not communicated with them directly about this but we certainly will and work with them to make sure that that they're accommodated <clears throat> after, after this is adopted so did all right or maybe the smart water worked um my concern is all of the truck routes appropriately so are centered around the some of the distribution centers and some of the activity that we already have there is nothing north of i-10 with the exception of the 303 which is pretty far west if you're a litchfield or mcdowell road customer we we didn't use litchfield road we didn't identify uh, dice art. I mean, some, those are main roads that are designed to, you know, there's six lanes. So dice art is an Avondale road. And, That'd be and, a great place to s send. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, maybe the smart water didn't work. And, and, <laughs> and, and we have identified Camelback road and our, like in our transportation master plan as a future truck route. It's just not built oh, out to a standard to have as a truck route now. So that would be your other east-west. I'm more worried about north-south. <laughs> and, and I think, and I realize, and the only reason that I'm hung up on this right now is this is an ordinance. So we're making this change. And if, if we talk to McLean's and they say, holy smokes, you're really putting us in a very bad way, we're going to have to come back and do this all over again. So, but I see Sarah I probably it. has an opinion on that. Sarah? Mayor, Council Member Stiff, I always have an opinion. <laughs> um, I, I'd just like to clarify one point. When Luke is talking about in terms of reasonable access, he's talking about terms of what are statutory requirements and they are based on federal constitution interstate commerce requirements. So if, for instance, uh, to get to the 303, the more reasonable, uh, reasonable point of access would be to go, I guess, up McDowell just straight to the 303. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, unless it was there was a safety concern about that, they would be able to do that under state law. So, you know, if McLean's would find problematic because it's no longer reasonable, then we would have to look at that, and that would be considered local traffic. So if there, and I, the fantasy example that I have in my head is if McLean's were to be delivering to uh, Luke, at the uh, PX there, the most direct route is from their facility right up Litchfield Road right to the base. No, they couldn't do that. That's what I'm saying. This ordinance prohibits them from doing if, that. If we have posted Litchfield as a non-truck truck, truck route, it's their access and the uh, limitations on the city's ability to regulate are only limited on access to uh, federal highways, uh, uh, interstate highways. So the trucks that so part two of that is I am a truck driver delivering to Luke. I get off at the I-10 at Litchfield. I am prohibited from taking Litchfield Road North to go to Luke, am I not? Yes. I think this is, a, for me, this is a problem because we are, we are killing commercial traffic to Luke Air Force Base because Litchfield Road, I think, is the way to get there. People aren't coming across the 101 from Glendale. They're taking Litchfield. It's the most direct route. Same thing to um, the Wigwam. I mean, we've got partners in this that we haven't thought all the way through this, and I'm concerned about that. I don't care what road it is, but I don't think 303 is the only north-south road that we should be we should be pushing traffic to. I'm done. Uh, yeah, I'll just add, ask the question to you. So you think it's okay for them to go through Litchfield, Litchfield uh, Park? Litchfield Road? Litchfield Road. Yeah, I think Litchfield Road, especially, in, you know, our component of it, it's six lanes. We designed it to move traffic. I think that that... I'm, I'm just talking about going to another municipality. Well, I mean, but forget Goodyear, the next neighboring city. They're, they're doing that today. And if Litchfield Park says, hey, we're going to kill truck traffic on Litchfield Road through our city, then then they've basically, they've taken the action. But I, we have no north, north south truck route north of I-10 but the 303, and that is, that's my concern, is it's a long distance between uh, Dysart and the 303 to have no north-south traffic. Um, 
for this commerce, this important piece of commerce. I can I can see where you're coming from, but I, I just wonder, uh, for safety's sake, for citizens, uh, communities, and accidents. I would look road to road like I ten to three hundred three is it's pretty smooth. Have you have you come out of the city hall, you know, and gone to make a left on? Uh, in, in Litchfield, when a truck's coming from Litchfield, it makes a a left to go down to, uh, that. Uh, it's scary. So I when I've done it a couple times, I have to back up my car for them to get around, and, uh, and they're just so sweet. They blow kisses at me and wave at me. They just love the way I do it. But I don't do it for them. I do it because I think the truck's going to hit me, and it is going to hit me. So I think there's some other things we have to start considering here, you know, and I think uh, it, we are giving them two great highways. We put a lot of money in those highways. They can go faster and they can drive easier because of the road. So I, I, don't, I don't see that. Mayor, if they're delivering to Luke, they can't get there from there. The 303... The it only to access northern. to Luke to is Camelback. It goes to northern. northern. Or, or all the way up to northern to come all the way back. As a truck driver, that is to valuable time and mileage. And if it's an independent, it's coming out of their pocket. I just I think we are putting a regulation in place when we already have an existing pathway to go north and south, in my opinion only. I, I, I can respect that opinion, but I don't think... Mayor Lord, council members, I, I think we may... Base, I, I think we may have. Uh, Can you speak up close in that, please? Sorry. Yeah, I <laughs> know. Get you a stool. I, I think I may have uh, misled you a little. Um, so you're saying they're coming from McLean's. They're coming from McLean's warehouse down on McDowell. Either McLean's warehouse on McDowell, or they're making a delivery. It's to almost Luke. McDowell and Litchfield Road. Okay. Um, so this would it would arguably be considered a, it would be considered a local delivery because there's no truck route they're coming from a non-truck route and that would if that was the nearest point of delivery uh and there was no other uh truck route that close um i would think that we could you know it would be there'd be a case that it was a, a local delivery mm -hmm. i think the the biggest public perception issue we're going to have with this, this is very similar to we made the grand announcement that all of our lights were synchronized and then everyone expected them to be and none of them were. So now that we say we've got truck routes and people are going to be calling and saying there's a truck on this street that shouldn't be there, we're going to have to have this over and over again. So I think with this comes either some sort of a public ed uh, campaign or something. Um, otherwise, this is going to turn into a nightmare. Me. Vice Mayor? Okay, so I travel Bullard all the time because we live off of Bullard. That's how I enter where I live for the last 19 years. The McLean trucks get off at I-10 at Bullard, and they hang a right right with me, and they go up to McDowell, and they hang another right, and then they go into the McLean where there's a light to get in and out of their facility. If they're coming out, they either come out to the right, hit Litchfield, take another right, go hit 10, or take a left, come to Bullard, and get on I-10, and then they're, they can get to the 303. Uh, I've seen trucks going down Litchfield Road to deliver at Fry's at Camelback, 18 wheelers, many of them, coming right down Litchfield Road and turning into Fry's to make a big delivery. And I've seen them go to the base because <clears throat> they have to enter only at one certain gate of the base, which is on Litchfield. And it is accessible, that area is accessible off of Northern and off of Glendale and off of Litchfield. So I honestly do not think we're hampering them because I do agree with you, it's a local delivery. If they're going from McLean and they're delivering locally to Luke, that's a local delivery right up that road. We're not doing anything any different, but it would be nice to tell them what we're going to do. Thanks, Rebecca. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm going to start a little bit from the very beginning. This is an ordinance that is beneficial to the city of Goodyear. This is an ordinance that is beneficial for our residents. We have a number of complaints that come to us specifically for Saraville, but I can see them coming to us from other areas as we increase our industrial and manufacturing and we have truck deliveries. And thank you, Vice Mayor. That was a perfect example of where trucks should go. 
In addition, we were talking earlier about them potentially going down McDowell. We would then be having complaints from those homes that are against McDowell about the truck traffic. Mm -hmm. The goal of this is to ensure that trucks take the most direct route to a truck route and don't circuitously drive through the city of Goodyear. If they're coming to the city of Goodyear to make a delivery or have a pickup, we're absolutely open to that. We're open for business as we always say, but this is to help them understand the roads where we want the truck traffic because it's not gonna negatively impact our residents. This is something that we in engineering deal with all the time. And so in all honesty, this is an excellent update to our ordinance. The last time we did this was in 2002. This is a long time in coming, and this is something that we should um, move forward with, and that's why we recommend it. Thank you. I just have one to ask here, is that uh, we use social media. Uh, we use the West Valley View mm -hmm. um, in the Arizona Republic, and um, whenever it's time to advertise that, um, that we should really push that out to the media and tell, and tell people. But I agree with you about the safety of it. We used to get a lot of reports on Bullard mm -hmm. and on, Lit and on, on uh, Indian School, too. And, now and, says and as I've told the chief, mm -hmm. I knew they weren't supposed to be there. And I followed the trucks trying to get the names <laughs> off the truck. So I was coming back to call. Um, but he's discouraging me from doing that. So I've been very <laughs> good about not doing it. But it still goes on. Yeah. Um, and so... And, and I know the company that you're talking about, They're wonderful. they had uh, talks with us since I've been on this council mm -hmm. in 2005 about uh, uh, better roads for them. And, and they requested a new road being made and we couldn't do it. Uh, you know, it wasn't possible. So they have been under discussion for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. So unless they've made a recent complaint most of the time, they go that way, and, and because that's that's what it was told to them a long time ago, to go to Bullard and get out of I-10. And the, the thing of it is, you can go north or south, so east or west. So my concern is the only north south north of I-10 is the 303. That's it. Okay. If you look south, look on that map south of I-10. There's like three or four options. That's my only point. Well, we don't give anyone any option but the 303. It, and it is difficult uh, because it's wherever you locate your business. And they were located very early on in Goodyear before we even, you know, were, were pro you know, have made this kind of progress. So, Sherry? I'm sorry, Councilman Laura Tano. Uh, I kind of read it as local traffic when I read it. That's why I didn't have a problem because I see that as local traffic. You're starting from, you're making a delivery from McLean. Just like there's no truck routes up to Estrella. But if you need to make a delivery, even if it's a semi, it's going to go up that road. It's going to come down. Uh, the fact that Council Member Stipp may read it a little bit different does show we, we really do need to work on the education. I don't think it's going to be a problem because you're not going to have a lot of trucks. I think my understanding from the truck route is the idea is the truck route is supposed to be for basically commerce. So you're doing the truck route like on the freeway. You are going to California. You are going to Tucson. We're not having you skirt around the city. If you're making a delivery, your stopping point, you have to get there through our city. I don't think we're going to be citing anybody. So if we could just make sure that people understand what local traffic is. Um, just the fact there was some confusion, I think we need to be really clear with that because I do support it. I'm, like I said, I think the Australia example gives you another example. There's nothing south and there's not going to be, but we are going to have trucks up there. So. Councilmember Hampton. I'm sorry, I'm got off the subject a little bit, but I was reading the I didn't see. Is there an increase in maintenance to those roads that we're going to be making truck routes, like a, 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 a higher frequency in maintenance or more budget, more money in the budget to make sure the asphalt is higher? Or I assume they're going to get more wear and tear with that large amount of trucks on us. Uh, all of our roadways are already the uh, collectors, arterials, they're designed to handle truck traffic. Okay. Yeah, I'm just curious if we're going to go only to that, if there would need to be anything in there to be more maintenance potentially. So, okay. Thank you. Councilmember Kano. I live near McLean, and so I coexist with their trucks. And so I, you know, learned that that's a part of our, our driving. One of my concerns is how are you possibly going to differentiate between local truck drivers and those who are violating 
um, potentially violating the truck routes. I would think that enforcement is a huge challenge uh, with all the matters facing our police. This is probably not the highest level one. So certainly uh, identifying repeat offenders and education is gonna be a huge, huge thing. And I think with the growth in our city and, and all of the advanced industry coming in things, uh, certainly more frequent evaluation of the truck route is going to be a, a great idea. It's been a long time since we've looked at it. So, uh, yes, and thank you for your comments. Um, we will be working with the police department and then certainly with communications as well as economic development. We have a good relationship with them and we'll be reaching out to some of our um, trucking companies to have those conversations as we have done in the past with um, Amazon and Macy's. And so we'll certainly do that. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? All right, we're gonna vote. Thank you very much. We're gonna vote on this. So could I have a roll call vote, please? Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Council Member Stepp? Nay. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Council Member Kano? Aye. Council Member Pizzillo? Aye. Council Member Loretano? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. Thank you very much. All right, we go to 7.2, proposal to adopt the development impact fee study and development fees, finance manager and budget Research, Laura Wiggenroth will be presenting. Laura. Thank you. And we are finally here with the last action you need to take with regard to the impact fees. Uh, I uh, uh, would uh, like to say that this has been uh, about a two year process for those of us who were at the very beginning to procure the consultant through tonight. Um, and I did want to recognize Tammy Blenar from my team, who's in the audience, who has been uh, keeping us on task and moving forward throughout the whole project. And Sarah's been up here a lot, and uh, she has also been instrumental, and especially in the piece we're presenting today, which is the ordinance uh, changes as well as implementing the fee. Um, so thank everybody who's been involved, uh, including the departments and the stakeholders as well. And as you recall, we did have an extensive stakeholder process uh, through the, uh, this, this particular uh, activity. Um, and we're at the point in the process where uh, we'd held all the required steps to adopt the plan and then to do the public hearing on these fees. Um, today, we're asking that you adopt the fees. There will then be a 75 day waiting period according to the statute with the fees becoming effective on April 1st. And then, we'll, uh, and then, uh, in addition, the statute has some exemptions where some particular developments would not be subject to the fee increases uh, for another up to 24 months. Uh, just as a reminder, these are the same fees you've been seeing for a couple of sessions now. Uh, I'll note that we did make a last, uh, there was a change made in the uh, ordinance uh, to clarify the wording so it would be clear to everybody that that particular wastewater fee there that is being reduced, even if you fall under that up to 24 months of exemption from the fee increases, that fee decrease will go into effect immediately uh, for those entities. Um, and then those, these are the south fees that we've also seen um, and, and the impacts uh, relative to uh, the group of retail, office, and industrial. And again, these are the same uh, items we've been seeing before. Um, in addition uh, to actually asking you to adopt the fees, we're asking you to adopt uh, some code revisions to go along with that. Uh, that we have to do that to incorporate these new fees. Um, we are also in, because there will be some entities that will be subject to the old fees for up to 24 months, we need to retain those old fees in the ordinance. Um, and so there's been a section added showing the retention of those old fees. And that particular section will expire on March 31st of 21, which would be the last opportunity for somebody to fall under those fees. Um, we've also made a number of cleanup changes where we've eliminated say repeating state statute language by repeating the exact language and instead referring to the state reference, uh, statute reference. Um, we've also had in our ordinance some cases that related to the first time you adopted a fee and the things you had to do like the first audit or the first uh, report. So we've taken those out of the ordinance as they're no longer appropriate. Um, and then we clarified the language around the 24-month exemption and the definitions there. Um, 
and that's what we've been calling moratorium uh, as well. Um, some, ex you know, there's, you know, some examples are building permit wasn't defined in our old ordinance. It's now defined. Um, you know, there's a number of other examples like that that we could show you where we're doing uh, some cleanup. But overall, the ordinance changes that are you're being asked to, or this ordinance that you're being asked to approve, is not intended to change our current practice, mm -hmm. with the exception of the fees. <laughs> um, and with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Otherwise, I'd ask you to adopt the ordinance and the two resolutions that are required to both accept the, uh, adopt the fee report, adopt the fees, and adopt the ordinance, re, uh, new ordinance. Thank you, Lori. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right, will the city clerk please read resolution 2019-1918 by title only? Adopt resolution number 2019-1918, approving and adopting development impact fee study, approving development fees and methodology and development impact fee study, adopting development fees and development impact fee study, providing for corrections and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Can I have a motion second to adopt resolution 2019-1918? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Vice Mayor Campbell and a second by Councilman uh, Pazillo. Open for council discussion. Councilman Pazillo. Just some clarification, Lori, on that 24 months. What what kicks that in? If they, I mean, the, the fees won't take effect till April, correct? Correct. So if, if they pull a billing permit before the fees take effect, they have 24 months under the old fees? If, uh, if they have an approved site plan. Okay, so it's a site plan. Uh, then, and then they pull, a pull, for residential, they have to have an approved flat. <laughs> and uh, then they have to pull a building permit before April 1st, and then the fees would apply for 24 months from when that first building permit was pulled. For commercial, it has to do with when, they're, when they got their site plan approved. So, okay, so if their site plan's approved before April, 1st. April then they have 24 months. If it's residential, they actually have to have a permit. They have to have a, correct. Okay, I got you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right, roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Councilmember Kano? Aye. Councilmember Pazillo? Aye. Councilmember Loretano? Aye. Councilmember Stiff? Aye. Mayor Aye. All right, will the city clerk please re uh, read resolution 2019 1917 by title only, please? Adopt resolution number 2019-1917, declaring as a public record that certain document filed with the city clerk titled amendment to article 9-8, development fees of chapter 9 of the Goodyear City Code, dated January 14, 2019. Thank you. Can I have a motion a second to adopt resolution 2019-1917? Do I hear that motion? So moved. Second? Second. I heard a motion by Council Member Stiff and a second by Councilman Hampton. Open for discussion. No discussion. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Council Member Kano? Aye. Council Member Pizzillo? Aye. Council Member Loretano? Aye. Council Member Stipp? Aye. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. M motion carries. All right. Will the city clerk please read ordinance 2019-1416 by Tyler Wollin, please? Adopt ordinance number 2019-1416, amending article 9-8 development fees of Chapter 9 of the Goodyear City Code, providing for an effective date, providing for the repeal of conflicting codes and ordinances, providing for pres preservation of ex existing rights and obligations, providing for severability, and providing for corrections of Scrivener's errors. Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion a second to adopt Ordinance 2019-1416? So moved. Second. I a motion from Vice Mayor Campbell. Do I hear a second? Second. I have a second from Councilman Kano. Open for council discussion. No discussion. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Councilmember Pazillo? Aye. Councilmember Loretano? Aye. Councilmember Stipp? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Councilmember Kano? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. All right. We're at 7.3. The next item is to request to adopt the 2019 state and federal legislative agenda. Our government relation manager, Rob Bohr, presenting. Rob? Hello, Mayor and Council. Uh, tonight you'll be asked to consider a resolution that would adopt the 2019 state and federal legislative agenda. So um, you have become familiar with this process, so I'm gonna do a very quick overview of some of the information related to the 
legislative agenda tonight. Uh, as you know, tonight begins with you approving the agenda, which sets up um, kind of general guiding principles in different areas at both the state and federal level that um, provide some guidance for us as staff to advocate for uh, or against, depending on what that legislation is. And um, if, if anything does fall outside of that general area, we'd always come back and get that specific approval from you at that time. So the way the process works is, of course, as legislation gets dropped, we review that as staff, um, which has already begun happening for this current session that, that kicked off today. And uh, so I'd send that to the appropriate departments and, and discuss, discuss with management. And then each Friday, uh, the, all the staffs from each of the cities here in the Maricopa area, the, my counterparts in many of those cities have a weekly meeting to discuss the legislation that is out there that, that has an impact on cities and uh, what that impact might be for the respective cities and, and sort of talk strategy as far as how we, how we tackle that from there. Um, and then, as you know, I'd like to get out regular updates to you uh, by email and, and, of course, meeting with you and talking to you um, to keep <laughs> you updated and, and informed on what's going on down there. And then, as has come up in past years, as well as keeping you updated and informed, is also an effort to keep the residents uh, updated and informed. So last year, we, we actually did do some, some new things related to that uh, with the lead class, the, the um, resident uh, initiative, the C Citizens Academy um, Leadership and Enrichment and Development, we actually took um, the alumni down to the Capitol and they spent a couple hours down there getting a whole walkthrough from Senator Lisa Atondo and, and as well as our two uh, representatives from that legislative district for um, explaining how the whole process works, walking them through it, showing them all the areas, and then actually ending it by having them sign in to speak so that in the future they can, they can actually sign in and, and show their uh, support or opposition to legislation as it's introduced. Um, so we'll continue to do that this year. We also did create a legislative alert system where we can get information out. Folks that are interested can sign up to get information about legislation that impacts cities, and uh, we'll keep them informed as information does come up. Um, this coming session, oh, one other thing we did last session was with Legislative District 4. We did a town hall um, where we hosted it at one of the schools, and they came up and talked to members of the community. Uh, one of the reasons for that uh, was one of the new members, Dr. Jure Peaton uh, in LD4 and getting a chance to introduce them. Um, this year with a couple recent members of LD13 as well as a new member that we all know well, former council member Joanne Osborne here in Goodyear, um, we are, are looking at hosting a, um, another town hall at Pebble Creek. We're looking at January 31st, which is a Thursday in the evening to get a chance for our residents to, to interact and hear from those folks as well. So as you know, today was the first day of the new reg legislative session. Um, Governor Ducey did, did do, provide his state of the state address earlier today, as many of you probably saw. Um, we have seen changes in our two districts, as I kind of touched upon already, with uh, Joanne Osborne being the new representative here in Legislative District 13, as well as uh, Senator Kerr, who was appointed at the beginning of last year after uh, Senator Montenegro had resigned to run for Congress, and then uh, Representative Tim Dunn, who replaced, uh, uh, who took, took office middle of last session when Re Representative Don Shooter was actually expelled from the legislature. Uh, so then in Legislative District 4, not as many changes, as I mentioned at the beginning of last year, we had Dr. Peaton um, first come into office, and then she was appointed uh, to that office. And then, of course, uh, Representative Charlene Fernandez, who serves as the minority leader in the House this year, and then Senator Lisa Otondo, who's been there for a while, who um, serves as the minority whip in the Senate this year. And uh, just a little bit on, on leadership itself. We have at Speaker of the House is going to be um, Rusty Bowers, and Karen Fan is the current president of the Senate. So I mentioned the guiding principles. These are the, the areas that legislation often falls under. 
um, these categories. So uh, the, the attached legislative agenda really kind of gets into explanations of what these different guiding principles mean and, and what it means as we're down there working on, on legislation and, and how we can um, interpret that to know that we have the, your support in these different areas. But again, if, if there are specific things that are very high profile or fall out of these areas, we'll always come back to you to, um, to get that official support as well. So not gonna go through these in, in much detail as you know what these mean, but fiscal sustainability, it's already been mentioned in one of your presentations tonight, but the importance of protecting state shared revenue and really all funding sources that, that impact cities. Local authority, of course, is that, you know, maintaining that, that that's local decision making on local matters is important and making sure that that's not taken away from us from other levels of government. Uh, economic development at the state level, always looking at existing tools that are there and maintaining those but also any, any new tools that might be available to help attract economic development in this area will always support those types of things. Military preservation at the state level, um, really just making sure that there's no uh, land use issues or anything that, that's going to impact the, the mission of Luke Air Force Base. Transportation, always a, always a big thing at both state and federal level. Um, this year will be, well, last year we had HERF funds, Highway User Revenue Fee funds were restored finally um, after they found a new source of funding, uh, DPS, the Department of Public Service, Public Safety, sorry. So um, this year we'll maintain, you know, make sure that that, that new system uh, stays in place and any changes to the state transportation funding are, are things that are advantageous to, to cities and towns. And then water, water was the very first priority we heard from Governor Ducey today. Um, as, as all of you know, I think uh, we were, the state was given a deadline at the end of this month, January 31st, to have a, um, a plan in place for the drought contingency plan where Lake Mead has, has gotten below that level. So we are the last state of those that are, that are among them to, to come to the federal government and provide our plan as far as how that water would be mitigated. So uh, it's obviously gonna be a top priority at the very beginning for the state is to, to make sure we have that plan in place. And then just quickly on the federal government, um, they convened about a week and a half ago. Uh, as far as our Arizona's congressional representation, I think you probably all saw some of the, many of the ads related to a big Senate race that we had uh, here recently. And now we have two new senators. And in fact, it's both of those who were, who were involved in those commercials. So Senator Kirsten Sinema, of course, was elected uh, to, for what was Senator Flake's seat, where um, Senator Martha McSally was then appointed to uh, the seat that was left by John Kyle and, and previously belonged to Senator John McCain, who passed away. Um, as you probably also know, the, the Democrats did take control of the, of the House of Representatives in Congress. So we do have um, that change this coming year. And then as far as Goodyear's congressional delegation, of course, we, we have two congressional districts here in Goodyear, which is CD8 and CD3. CD8 uh, belongs to Congresswoman Debbie Lesko, who was, appointed to, um, who was appointed to the seat that Trent Franks resigned. And then um, Congressman Raul Grijalva, who's congressional district three, uh, more of the southern area of Goodyear, and he's been in office now since 2003, I believe. So then again, just real quickly through those, um, those guiding principles at the federal level as we talk to, <clears throat> excuse me, as we talk to congressional staff or our congressional members, the, the things that we'll continue to focus on. One thing that we did actually take off this year, back in 2014, uh, you guys, or council at the time passed a resolution to support marketplace fairness or some type of similar legislation um, that has pretty much taken care of itself now with a Supreme Court uh, decision that, that does kind of provide for those same parameters that you all had supported back then. So it didn't seem to be something that we have to continue to pursue at the, at the federal level. Uh, transportation infrastructure is still 
continues to be something that we hear that, that there may be a plan in the works or something that we may see, of course, that all kind of depends at this point on, on when uh, the federal government gets started back to, to taking action. So uh, economic development, again, just making sure that we continue to monitor all those opportunities and support what, what might be helpful to us. Uh, water, just like at the state level, we will um, support anything related to our sustained water supply at the federal level. Aviation will work closely with the city of Phoenix, with the um, Phoenix Goodyear Airport and anything that's going to have any impact related to our local airports and, and aviation. And then military preservation, we actually have a collective uh, contract with all the West Valley cities surrounding the base. With, um, with a firm in DC to really keep an eye on, on any of those issues that could impact the uh, mission of the, of the base, of Luke Air Force Base, or the funding, or um, really any opportunities that might be there, positive, um, that we might be able to pursue as well. And then grants, always continuing to um, not just seek out grants, but, uh, but even more so probably to, to seek support of those grants that are identified from, from different federal offices and from some of our congressional friends. So I believe that is it for, for my portion of the presentation, but Mayor and Council, if you do have any questions, I'd be happy to take those. Thank you. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right, will the city clerk please read resolution 2019-1929 by title only? Adopt resolution number 2019-1929, adopting a 2019 state and federal legislative agenda and providing authorization to the city manager or her designee to take action. Thank you, can I have a motion a second to adopt resolution 2019-1929? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Moved. Second. I heard a motion by Vice Mayor Campbell and a second by Councilman Bazillo. Open for council discussion. Vice Mayor, did you ask something? No, I just said good job, Rob. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. All right. Any discussion? Councilman Bazillo? Hey, Rob, I'm with you on what you said, but there's one thing I'm hoping they address um, this legislative session. You know, I had the opportunity, I guess, to use one of our hospitals, and uh, it came to my attention that even though you go into a general provider, like a hospital, they don't necessarily hire people that accept their same insurance. So you get in and next thing you know, you're getting bills from people who you have no idea who they are because they're all subcontractor. Mm -hmm. You know, I've talked to um, our new legislative uh, individual there, uh, Joanne Osborne. I said, you know, I'd like to see something passed at the state level that says, if you go to a primary care facility, anybody that's associated with that facility has to accept as the uh, in-network hospital insurance that that particular facility accepts. Now, I talked to Stan before he left, and uh, they were working on some of that, but I guess a lot of them, you know, they're all independent. But it becomes a real problem for those individuals going in those facilities, especially if you're in a condition where you can't either ask them, hey, do you take this insurance or that insurance, because you're not in that kind of frame of mind to do that, that I think something has to be done legislatively, because apparently it's an issue in the hospitals, and I think um, individuals walking in there think that it could all be covered isn't being. So um, I'd like, if you see any of that happening down here at the state legislature, I'd like to be made aware of it because I think that's a real problem. I think our health system's a problem to start with, but that to me is a bigger problem when you think that you're covered because it happens to be an in-network facility and you find out you're getting bills that you have no idea who they are because they happen to be contract people. So please keep that in mind for me. Councilmember Brazil definitely will pass along what we hear as far as what's what's going on down there related to that. I know you mentioned that as a concern when you and I talked earlier as well. Thank you. Any, any, any other? No? Okay, so we now are, that is open for discussion. There's not anything necessary anymore. So we're going to have roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. C Councilmember Loretano? Aye. Councilmember Stiff? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Councilmember Kano? Aye. Councilmember Pazillo? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. Thank you, Rob. All right, we're on 7.5. The last uh, item on the agenda is a presentation of the State of the City Address. I have a little something to say before we start this. Um, the State of the City, uh, a, a, special, a special edition and in, in focus was mailed to our community members after the first year. Um, 
and I have already received several positive comments about the content from residents. And I will say it was at a Pebble Creek event mm -hmm. and a lot of positive. And so I, I use that kind of in my scale. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was pleased to that. In addition to the In Focus, we film a state of the city video each year, which can be streamed online for all to view. This is the, actually the first year, okay? <laughs> Tonight is the official release of our state of the city video. And I hope you will enjoy it. So let's take a look at that. Hello, I'm Mayor Georgia Lord, and I'm thrilled to report that the state of the city is strong and prosperous. Goodyear is growing rapidly and receiving attention from some big name companies, such as Anderson Windows, Ball Corporation, and Chewy.com. It's hard to keep up with the excitement. In just a year, we have estimated more than $150 million in capital investment from projects under construction. And these major companies will bring over 2,400 jobs for our extremely talented workforce. These investments are a true testament to the business community's confidence in Goodyear. And we couldn't be more proud to be the home to all of our dedicated business partners. Abrazo West Campus Hospital is one of our leading employers and continues to provide award-winning health care to the region. In response to the growth of the community, the hospital has announced a multi-million dollar expansion to meet the needs of our community. The hospital's soon-to-be neighbor is also swiftly progressing as we see Adelante Healthcare facility taking shape next door. Adelante Healthcare's newest facility will expand healthcare resources in Arizona with their eye-catching, innovative design. The dirt is certainly moving throughout Goodyear and I look forward to seeing what else is to come. The community we call home would not be what it is today without our high quality neighborhoods and outstanding residents. The diversity of homes settling in our city continue to bring a smile to my face as I can confidently say that Goodyear is a place anyone and everyone can call home. The city council, staff and I all take our jobs very seriously and never settle for the norm. We will continue to find ways to better our community, to maintain safety and offer recreational opportunities, and to ensure we are the best place to live, work, and grow a family. With over 84,000 residents now calling Goodyear home, I am confident the excitement will continue in 2019. I am humbled and honored to represent you as we build our beautiful community together. Thank you for choosing Goodyear and helping to preserve the small town feel that we all know and love. Happy New Year. We are definitely ready for 2019. Excellent. Wow. Well, I have to tell you, I'll be the first to speak on this. Staff did a great job. Golly. They didn't have a real helpful participant, <laughs> but they worked through it uh, and we made it to the end. Uh, so it, it just it just demonstrates where we're going as far as the social media. Um, and I'm sure this is just the beginning of other things being put on online. So um, wow. I'm supposed to open for discussion, but I don't think there's any discussion we need to have on this. So thank you, Council, for bearing with that. Does Council have any comments or updates or requests for information? I do. Yep, yep. Councilman, uh, Vice Mayor. Um, I have, um, may I do a staff inquiry at this time? Um, yeah, can okay. we do that? Um, right. I am requesting a work session on vapor shops. It seems that we have no regulation right now and we are locating two, three, and four vapor shops into one shopping center. Mm. And I think we need to talk about that and make sure that we're uh, putting them in the best places. Uh, I would also like to have uh, an update or a work session on what we are going to do with the old police station on Litchfield Road. Um, I'd like to have something, this is a, a council member Pizzillo's pet texting while driving uh, in lieu of an officer being killed because someone was texting. I think the city needs to take a look at it, Council Member Pizzillo, and possibly have an ordinance for it so police can do something about it. And um, 
That's it. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Councilwoman Lortana. I, I let the city manager know this and um, I, I don't know exactly follow up. Um, for city employees that are covered under Abrazo, apparently Abrazo and Cigna are having some sort of issue and Ooh. it isn't fixed. Okay, yeah, because I just got a postcard last week, so that said it wasn't. Oh, has it been fixed? Lineman, do you know? Yeah, because I got a post recently. Oh, no, it was last <laughs> week. Are we playing nice? Uh, we are, Councilmember Lortano. The uh, negotiations went right down to the wire, so there was communication that went out um, in anticipation that they were going to resolve the issue. However, they have resolved uh, the negotiation. So, um, Abrazo, all tenant health facilities are still at network. Oh, good. Then. So, we'll, we're sending a clarification out on Tuesday in our notes to know. Another. Oh, good, so that people will know. Because, yes. Yeah, because my last thing was the postcard I got, so. I appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there any other uh, <laughs> request for information from any of the other councils? All right. City manager, do you have anything to report? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, before I give my update, I would like to clarify um, the vice mayor did request two work sessions, and my understanding is that we need to have three council members who agree for staff to bring those items back for work session. So I wanted to clarify. I, I don't mind as a mayor to I'll do it. I'll be nice. I thought I thought all three things that she asked for were. Thank you. Yeah. Thank so you. I. Why don't we Thank just do that? You. Very that good. On. So it'll okay. be texting while driving, vapor shops, and then we already have the other item on our city-owned property on Western and Litchfield coming back before council on February 25th. I just confirmed. Great. Right. Thank you. Um, as far as other updates, I just wanted to uh, let everyone know that we do have another upcoming holiday. The city offices will be closed on Monday, January 21st in observance of Martin Luther King Day. Emergency fire and police services will operate as normal and city offices will reopen at 8 a.m. on Tuesday, January 22nd. There will be no trash, recycling, or bulk collections on January 21st. Please plan for collection in the day after your regularly scheduled pickup. Thank you. Good, thank you. Well, future meetings, the next meetings are CFD meetings scheduled for January 28th at 5.45 and a regular meeting at 6 p.m. No further business, this meeting is adjourned.